Well, some Arsenal fans, it looks like it's still a Saturday where they won late by three goals to two, courtesy of that late winner coming in from the Hell End Academy graduate known as Race Nelson. And guys, if you never knew, Hell End took the occasion. The Arsenal Academy graduates took the occasion. How did they? Who is responsible for the first assist of the goal that Thomas Partey scores? Emily Smith Rowe. Where did he come from? Hell End Academy. For the second goal, who provides an assist to Ben White? Rest Nelson. Where did he come from? Hell End Academy. Who scores the late winner for Arsenal? It's Rest Nelson. Hell End took the took the day they held Arsenal in high prestige and obviously everyone was proud of the product of Hell End Academy and obviously they are doing great and wonders at the club of Arsenal and guys Let's forget about that because on Thursday, it's another big test for Arsenal. Some huge changes need to be made by the manager as he's going to be playing against Fulham on the weekend. With loads of worries of who is going to lead the line for Arsenal, they're having, <coughs> they're having no prolific centre forward because Nketia injured, Trossard out but might return on Sunday. Gabriel Jesus, Gabriel Jesus, Gabriel Jesus, I'm sorry, Jesus, it's Jesus, I've been told, it's Jesus. Gabriel Jesus is one of those players that is back, but a decision needs to be made by Mikel Arteta on whether to travel with him to Portugal or not. Welcome to Rokani Media Football. How are you guys? And where are you watching us from? I go by the names of Rokan David. Smash the like button, guys. Comment and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. This side, known as Sporting Lisbon, has played Arsenal five times. That is it. And the five times they've made, Arsenal has gone ahead to win almost all of them. And they are yet to lose or concede a goal in their previous four meetings with Sporting Lisbon. Meaning that out of the five, four have been won by Arsenal and they've kept clean sheets. And it's only one Arsenal has won when Sporting Lisbon have formed themselves onto the score sheet. Then the other one is Arsenal are unbeaten in their six previous meetings with Portuguese opponents in the UEFA Europa League. They have three, draw three wins and three draws, including eliminating Benfica in the knockout stages in 2020-2021. It was a 4-3 aggregate in the last 32 rounds. So, you now know that Arsenal is really one of those teams that is really having an edge over this team. But, there is one thing that you should know, that Sporting Lisbon have progressed from each of their previous six ties against English sides in the knockout stages of the UEFA Europa League, with all six coming against different teams. So, when they are playing against English sides in the in the knockout stages, they've gone ahead to progress. But which English sides have they been playing? Have they been playing Manchester United? Have they been playing Arsenal? Have they been playing Chelsea? Have they been playing Manchester City? Have they been playing Liverpool? Guys, I think that doesn't count into this because they have not been playing the decent sides of this. The only decent side I've seen them play recently is... Uh, is a Tottenham Hotspur and Tottenham went away they lost by is it three goals to two then when they came to white when they came to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium the game ended 2-1 in favor of Spurs so as it stands Arsenal really having an age and the Arsenal they are facing right now is one of the best teams in the world because if you are topping the best league in the world that is the Premier League that means you qualify to be the best team in the world or you qualify to be called the best team in the world not so according to me how do you see it guys because i believe that if at all you are that if at all you are playing in a league that is the best and you're topping it that puts you in the equation of being one of the best teams in the world not so so arsenal who are the absentees who are the absentees that arsenal are known having nketia Trossard, <clears throat> who else? Who else is out? Nketia, Trossard, Jesus is doubtful, but the entire squad is available. It's available. And for Sporting Lisbon, they are really a very good side. They are having an English player known as Mike Edwards, who puts on shirt number 10 
I saw him disturb Tottenham Hotspur a lot in that double tie of the Champions League because they are really grouped into the same group of the UEFA Champions League. So they had a chance to go on and go through, but they bottled their last game. They're supposed to beat uh, because it was Spurs. Uh, it was Spurs, Sporting Lisbon, Marseille. The reason other side that was there they were supposed to beat and they really bought hard and they failed to go through and they granted <clears throat> Tottenham Hotspur I think a chance to go through but Sporting Lisbon finished third and when they finished third they found themselves into a position of dropping down into the knockout stages and then being the knockout stages they found themselves they found themselves to be playing into what we call the knockout stage of the UEFA Europa League and they found themselves playing Mitigiland. They beat them by one goal. They drew 1-1 one -one at home and when they went away at Mitigiland, they beat them 4-0. That's why they found themselves into this round of 16 to face Arsenal. But this is a very trial moment for Arsenal and it means a lot to their season and it's a very huge question that Mikel Arteta has to answer. Is he going to decide to go weak? in the UEFA Europa League and prepare his strong side to play in the Premier League. Why? Arsenal has not been playing two games a week for a very long time. And playing two games a week, when you're playing on Tuesday or Wednesday and on Saturday or Sunday, that's different from playing on Thursday and playing on Sunday. Yet you are traveling on plane from England, London to Sporting Lisbon in Portugal. That is a different kind of fatigue altogether the jet lag that means two and four arsenal have to travel to london that's it so it's going to call in for a lot and i think michael Arteta is going to make a lot of changes because i think all that is on his mind is the premier league and i believe if at all there is any arsenal fan that has that was given options <laughs> that winning the premier league and getting knocked out of the UEFA Europa League on Thursday. Or you win the Europa League and you finish second in the Premier League. What would you go for? Every Arsenal fan will go for the first option. The Premier League is really the most important bit of this. Because the, <clears throat> the important bit of winning the UEFA Europa League is to go into the Champions League. If at all you fail to be in the top four positions of the Premier League, that will see you sail through to the Premier League, to, to the Champions League, but they are topping the table and even if they don't win the trophy, they are going to be into the Champions League position. So it is no doubt that Mikel Arteta is looking at the Premier League and we expect lots of changes to be made from the team that started over the weekend. And here we go with Mikel Arteta trying to really win his first continental trophy in his coaching career because he has already won the community shield and the FA Cup so he wants a continental trophy here this time around. System 433 that is one of the things that are going to have to capitalize in. The stadium where the game is going to take place is known as Jose Valverde known as Estadio Jose Al Valverde. It has a sitting capacity of 50,046 people that is the hosting stadium for Sporting Lisbon, a, one of the biggest teams in Portuguese history. Now, let's go to the players and how they're going to line up. In goal, obviously, there's going to be a change. This has been a tournament for Matt Turner and he has gone ahead to excel and take Arsenal through. On top of their group where they had teams like Ajax, Bordeaux, and uh, Bordeaux, Glint, and what? Another team I have forgotten their name, but uh, and FC Zurich. So, Having not been in the stitches, having not been in between the stitches for a very long time, I think he was last in goal when Man City was knocking out Arsenal from the 50th round of the FA Cup. That game ended 1-0. And uh, I think this is the time to welcome him back into the stitches of Arsenal or in between the goalposts of Arsenal. So Matana to start in goal. And I believe he's a decent goalkeeper and he has shown it game in, game out every time he's into that goal good at ball distribution he's an american goalkeeper and obviously he's doing wonders at arsenal and he's giving some good competition to, to aaron ramsdale and keeps pushing him in and i believe even if aaron ramsdale got an injury you wouldn't hesitate to bring in this guy when you're trusting him i believe 
uh, was it uh, there was a season when it came on through it's not this season but I believe you'll always love it you'll always and always love it Was it to eat that Matt Turner be in gold and you'll be strong on the right back I think it's really tricky Ben White having played only 45 minutes in the game of <coughs> Bournemouth and he came on through and he came on through at the beginning of the second half Tomiyasu had a very bad first half, but I believe all what made him play like that was simple lack of enough playing time. But I believe those 45 minutes put in his legs are going to make Mikel Ateta give him his spot. Give him his spot as a right back as they play away from home because they are not going to be a team that's going to be attacking a lot. They'll need to keep it tight at the back on very many occasions to stop that spotting Lisbon side because they are really flawless. They surge, they surge in the attacking positions. That is a team known as a, known as a sporting Lisbon. They are really good. And that's where Michael, is it Michael Johnson, that English player I've told you about, does his job best. He does play there and he surges. And I think Tomiyasu will be in a better position to stop him because I have no doubt for Tomiyasu, going forward by edwards is one of those that is really great and gong alves is another one that really passes that side and i think you can close him down very very well we go to the left back of arsenal i think for a man who has been crying in for game time looking like he's ready to go on and play for newcastle that is um that is um i mean uh kian tieni and it's time he started a game of football ever since he really started for Arsenal and, and I think he's the happiest for this tournament to come back because the international break is going to happen after the 19th of this month and he needs some good match fitness some good minutes in his legs to keep himself in a position of not worrying at anything that's going to happen when they are really calling in the players of Scotland and him playing on Thursday will put him in a perfect position for him to be thought about into that Scottish squad as they go into the Euro qualifiers of 2024. So as it stands, I believe Zinchenko is going to be rested for this game as they prepare for the game of Fulham on Sunday. And obviously, it's going to be Kian a man who is really wanting to get out of Arsenal because of lack of enough playing time. He's one of those players that would love Arsenal to play until the semi-final or the final because he would be knowing that at least every week, I'll be having a game to play on Thursday for Arsenal. But depending on the opposition, if Arsenal happens to land on a stronger position, I don't think Mikel Ateta will risk. He'll go in for his best, best players. That is Zichenko, the first choice. Or even going in for Tomiyasu to play as a left back. We've seen him on several occasions putting, putting Tomiyasu ahead of Kientieni in those positions of the right of the left back. Now, <clears throat> there is a man that was signed. There is a man that was signed by Arsenal in the joint transfer window. No one has seen him play competitively for Arsenal. And to me, I believe it's his debut this time round. It's the debut of Jakubu Kivio to me. I think if you don't give him a game like this to rest Gabriel Magalis, because Gabriel Magalis has played very many games, you'll need him in the Premier League. Why? You can't trust, you can't trust Jakubu Kivio in the Premier League because he's not Premier League proven. You need to introduce him slowly by slowly. You get but in a game like this, you can start him because you know that he is going to go on and really do the needful for Arsenal to grant to grant a player known as Gabriel Magales a position of rest into that Arsenal side. But he will travel with Arsenal, but I think Jakub Kivio's debut is this time round. Jakub Kivio, this is the debut for the man. Jakub Kivio for me. I believe it's his debut at Arsenal. Trust me, it's his debut. It's going to be the Yakubu, the Yakubu Kivio debut. And people will say that he would have played against Rob Hol he would have played alongside Rob Holding in the central defensive partnership because uh, we even need Saliba to rest. Guys, I believe Saliba never played in the World Cup. Saliba is looking nowhere near getting tired. But uh, when you look at Gabriel Magales, he has been playing the UEFA Europa League and the Premier League game. So I think he needs to be rested this time around. And I think it shouldn't be Rob Holding. It shouldn't be Rob Holding. You can't get two amateurish players. Okay, Rob Holding has been playing this competition, but you can't play two 
play as Rob Holding and Jakub Kivio in the same game, unless otherwise Mikelata decides to make that decision, but Sporting Lisbon is an elite side. They are having good forwards who put close to four goals past Tottenham Hotspur in two, dif in two different occasions. And when they are playing away in Sporting Lisbon, I mean Tottenham Hotspur, they conceded three three goals so it shows you that they are good their front three is really great and they are good at hitting on the break they are comfortable on the ball even if you press them they are press resistant they have the skill set and they surge when they reach the final third of the opponent so i believe he will need what we call saliba into this beautiful game of football to partner Jakub Kivio. but if at all he thinks saliba shouldn't start i think he'll go rob holding gabriel magales but i see Saliba and uh, Saliba and Jakub Kivio starting in this game. We go to we go to the we go to the central defensive midfield position because the system is 4-3-3. That is the single pivot. I think no reason for Party to start. Party should be ready for the game of Fulham over the weekend. And this is why you would love to be having these games like this because if there was not a game in the midweek. It would have been hard for Mikel Ateta to make a decision on who is going to play for Arsenal in the central defensive midfield position on Sunday. But this time around, he has all what it takes to put in Jorginho as a central defensive midfielder. Then Thomas Partey will be rested. Maybe he comes on through and plays him 10-15 minutes to really consolidate that midfield depending on the result of the game. Now... In the midfield, I believe this time round, Fabio Vieira is going to start. Odegaard is going to be rested. I mean, you see him not having a very good game against Bournemouth, but the Arsenal team was really caught unaware. And I believe that's where the problem came in from. But he had some good passes in there for you. That's why the manager took long to take him off the field of play to bring in Grant Xhaka. So I think he's really going to play into the Odegaard position. And I think Xhaka, having played close to 10 15 minutes in the game of um, Bournemouth, I believe he's returning to play and is going to wear the captain the the captain Amban for a team known as for a team known as Arsenal. So I believe Jaka, <coughs> Jorginho and Fabio Vieira. And with the experience of Jorginho and Guanti Jaka in such tournaments, because Jorginho has ever won this tournament at Chelsea, remember that very well. And I think Chelsea are the ones who beat Arsenal four one by that time. Edin Hazard was still even at Chelsea. I remember and Eugenio was playing to that single pivot position and they beat Arsenal for one so he knows what it means to be playing such tournaments and I think he's going to go on and really lead this Arsenal team by example. This is my player to Grant Jaka having rested him because you've been calling for that for a very long time and that experience is needed away in Portugal and Jaka has been really a very good player for Arsenal this season though I have my reservations on him you know that very well and I've always expressed them out loud in public. Now let's go to the front three of Arsenal. I think it's high time Bukayo Saka got an arrest and this man starts on the right side of the attacking midfield. That is Rice Nelson. One will say, but he thrived well playing off the left attacking side of the midfield in the game of Bournemouth. But I'll, remember, I'll, I'll bring you up to speed that in the game that Arsenal beat Nottingham 5-1 when he came in for Bukayo Saka, he played on the right attacking side of the midfield or as a right forward or right wide forward and he scored a brace and put up an assist for Martin Odegaard. You get? So he's one of the few the few wide forwards or wingers Arsenal has got that can play perfectly on the right wing and the left side. And I believe having him gotten himself two goal involvements in that game of Bournemouth at Emirates, he has bought himself a position to start in this game. And I see no reason as to why Ibuka Saka should be forced on the field of play. Saka should be on the bench. If at all the game doesn't go as the manager wants it to go, then he'll bring him on. And secondly, you can also bring you can also bring in Bukayo Saka to play some 10-15 minutes to get those minutes in his legs to prepare for the game of Fulham. That is really going to be strict. Because you need a fresh Bukayo Saka in the game of uh, Fulham on Sunday. You need a fresh Zinchenko. You need a fresh Ben White. You need a fresh Odegaard. You get? You need like four or five players who are really fresh into that beautiful fixture. That's why I've, talk, I've talked about Gabriel Magalis to be really benched. Why? He's going to face Mitrovic, one of the best headers of the ball, and he's so strong. And his physicality is really great. One of the biggest weapons he uses to really bull. To bull his 
his opponents and i think you better think of gabriel magales to mark to mark to mark uh, mitrovic because mitrovic is really a bully that's it now on the left side of the forward i think it's going to be emily smith away to play that side i think he's going to start and will be taken off 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 i think he got some good minutes into his legs and i think he's really ready to start in this game of football from portugal to rest some players for arsenal with the younger trossard out gabriel jesus doubtful nketia out everyone is asking himself who is going to lead the line of arsenal i believe they are only left with one option that is gabriel martinelli to lead that line though the manager said also that Emily Smith Rowe can also lead the line, meaning that the interchanges are going to be expected in the beautiful game of football. So we can see Martinelli drift off to the right, Race Nelson comes off to the left, then Emily Smith Rowe starts playing centrally, and vice versa. So I think that's what the team of Arsenal is going to look like, and I think Arsenal is really going to be having a very huge age to at least not lose, but a draw. I think the worst result Arsenal is going to get away from Portugal is a draw, but that team. If it combines very well, it can really cause havoc to Sporting Lisbon. And I know Mikel Arteta is going to go in for, for a draw. When a win comes in through, it will be good for him. But even if they lose, he will like us not lose like by one goal, by a margin of one goal. Because he knows that when they come to Emirates, they are going to kill off that game by two goals or three goals. And uh Arsenal has been one of those sides that really faced a very huge opposition against PSV away in Amsterdam. And this time round, they are going to face a team that is really more serious and hard than PSV. And I believe this time round, Arsenal might find themselves in a position of really having a hard game. But I believe the worst result for them to get, I think, is going to be a draw. I see them not losing. I see them not losing because Ateta won't hesitate to throw his players on the field of play. I'm going for a draw of 2-2. Two -two. A win is also possible. A win of like 2-1, 3-2 for Arsenal. But more favorably, I'm seeing a draw written all over this game because I've seen this team play and they make it harder at their stadium. So that's what I believe the game of football is going to be like. A draw. And a win is possible for Arsenal, but uh, I see a draw as the most favorable, favorable, favorable result for this Arsenal fixture away at Sporting Lisbon. And they're really having a very good game. They are really playing very well. And I think the experience of Jorginho and uh, Grant Xhaka is going to help them a lot in this beautiful game of football. And I think Mikel Arteta benched Grant Xhaka and Jorginho for that purpose for the game of Sporting Lisbon. So guys, your predictions are welcome in the comment section below. That's what I had for you, Sporting Lisbon versus Arsenal. Jakub Kivio, I'm assuming that he's going to get his debut in the Arsenal shirt in a competitive game of football. Remember, he played in the under-21s with Emily smith Rowe. That was a competitive game. This time around, we're talking about the big game in the European market or the second biggest league or to to club tournament in the European continent, that is the UEFA Europa League, coming next after the Champions League that is being played today. So, your thoughts on to my predicted starting 11 and my thoughts and my predictions are welcome in the comment section below. I go by the names of Rock and David. I sign out for now. See you later. May the Almighty Lord bless you abundantly. I sign out, guys. And I want to see close to 200 likes on this video. And don't forget to subscribe. Not so. Let's get back in the next three hours from now.